soaps. My name is Katie Carson. I am a professional soap maker and today we're going to be making another soap in my slumber party soap series available on February 6th at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time on our website royaltysoaps.com. There are going to be six different designs in this collection. Today we are going to do one of the most nostalgic to me personally. It's called Cotton Candy Bubblegum. It smells exactly like cotton candy bubblegum mixed with a lot of other sugary sweet things from the late 90s and early 2000s. It smells absolutely fantastic. It looks super cute but to me personally the absolute showstopper is the unique glitter blend that I put on top. I tell you guys how I make it so if you wanted to make the glitter blend at home you could. It uses eco-friendly holographic glitter. It also features two different glitters from The Good Glitter and they actually have some Valentine's Day themed glitter mixes on their website available now. You can use my affiliate link down below and you can get 15% off your order. So if you're in the uh, mood to get some eco-friendly glitter, well, there you go. Also, if you like my shirt, which tons of people have mentioned this recently, I do have a very, very, very small merch store over at Teespring. I just really wanted to be able to offer this design because tons of you people like the little scrapey, scrapey phrase. So that's linked down below as well. And this pin is uh, an exclusive pin design, part of the Soap Frosting Club kit. Everybody who is a Soap Frosting Club member gets one and it's in your little kit that I sell on the website so that you can learn to make soap frosting like me. So there's all the things that I'm wearing, I'm doing. I got these clips from Old Navy. I'm feeling the 90s. I'm feeling it. You had to have the little space buns. I have lip gloss on. <gasps> Foreshadowing. Anyway, it's gonna be an absolutely uh, amazing video. So uh, yeah, let's let's hop right into it. And now we make the bubblegum soap. So this one is just really fun. That's really all there is to say about it. I kind of don't have a preface for it. It just compiles all of the just marvelous early 2000s, late 90s candy treats into one thing. So it smells a lot like bubblegum and obviously I'm calling it cotton candy bubblegum, but there's more to it than that, okay? It's deep. All right, let's go ahead and blend this up. I'm going to mix it up on high until just past emulsion. Excellent. So I'm going to have three pastel little drop swirl things. What? Why can I not move this out of the way? Get out of the way, little cord. That'll do. All right. <laughs> anyway, what I was saying, three pastel accent colors. Just gonna weigh this out real quick. Gonna pour in about 20 ounces, which is honestly not that much. And then after that, I'm going to pour in some of my fragrance soil blend. I'm going to repeat that twice more. This really does smell like quintessential like childhood candy. It's delightful. All right and now we add the colorant. The first one I'm adding here is Blue Tide mixed with Shocker Blue. This is going to make a very bright cheery blue and then I'm going to add a little bit of titanium dioxide in there to kind of make it a little more pastel. Then we're going to add in some mint julep tiny bit of titanium dioxide into there as well. Some tickled pink with a little bit of TD. Gonna tone that down a little sister. Woo! Cause it can be so vibrant. And then a whole lot of titanium dioxide into our base here. It's gonna go kind of creamy anyway, but I thought might as well try to make it as light as possible. So I'm gonna scrape down these sides real quick. Then we're gonna blend up all of our colors and start pouring them into our two brambleberry molds. <laughs> Excellent! They're ready to go. Let's start pouring. We begin with the white. So I'm gonna pour, oh, I'd say about half of it in here. Get us a nice creamy base to begin with. And by the way, this fragrance oil combo acts 
absolutely superb, which is wonderful because sometimes these more sugary sweet fragrances give me trouble. Not always, but <laughs> it feels like more often than not. So it's nice to finally get a blend that performs well. And I will tell you my uh, little super secret sauce fragrance blend I am using today. It is 75% bubble luscious from Nature's Garden and 25% Jammin' Rock Candy from Nature's Garden. This is a really good blend. It smells like candy, but it's not kind of sickeningly sweet. That's a hard word to say for me, apparently. Um, <laughs> sickeningly sweet. Um, just smells nice and sweet, like a candy, but not so gross, like that, oh, I don't want to bathe with that. That's, that's no fun. <laughs> it's not like that. I'm gonna kind of pour some of the last bit of the pink in there, pour a little more of this green, kind of swirl it around. It's going to be a little different on every single bar per usual. And now, of course, I'm a scrapey scrapey out my uh, large containers and rather tiny containers. These do not actually hold that much soap. I know it looks like a lot, but it's more like 16 ounces. So think, you know, like one pound. That's just not that much. And ahead and put the rest on top. A side note, because I never talk to you guys while I'm scraping out these containers because it takes me so long. I'm very, very particular about stuff like that in general, like just as a person, um, having containers completely scraped out. If ever I clean a window or a mirror, it has to be perfect. It just, I don't know, there's something in my brain that just needs that. But Caleb's very grateful because Caleb has to do the dishes for all of the videos that I film, and there's virtually nothing for him to clean out of these dishes by the time I'm done with them because all Often after I scrape and it looks something like this, which is not even close to being done, like there's still so much up here that's gonna bother me. I will go and wipe these out with paper towels. I know a lot of you people have asked about dishes. You have to be careful with washing linens for soap making though uh, in the washing machine, just, just so you know, because there can be enough oily buildup that it kind of wrecks your system. So I would that's not really something that I recommend, but you could potentially wash them out in the sink, which is what we tend to do. But by the time this all gets completely scraped and uh, I put dishes in there, there's not much to clean. Most everything, just so you guys know, because I've had people ask, Oof, I was living life on the edge here. That was dangerous. <laughs> Most of the dishes here get done in the dishwasher. So just so you guys know, because I know a lot of you people have asked me about washing soap dishes. We have a dishwasher specifically for soap dishes. It does not get used for any sort of food dishes. It's for soap dishes only. Um, there's an economy setting that we use on it um, to cut the grease. We use a really, really, really good dishwasher detergent because you do have to do that. Um, they're very oily. And um, yeah, that's kind of how we do dishes over here. Now that wasn't always the case. Um, I washed dishes by hand for years. And that is typically what I recommend for most hobbyists to do, just to wash them by hand after they have soap already completely saponified on them. So if I was a hobbyist and this was the only batch that I was creating, I would take all of these dishes that have soap on them, gather them up, put them into a trash bag, let them saponify, and then the next day either scrape out the soap on them or um, just wash it with a rag and let it dissolve naturally um, and then dry them. And that's, that's how I would do it. I probably wouldn't take the time to wipe them down like I do for Caleb but we're in a slightly different position because this is a business. Then as far as your lye containers go, like this one that I have here, uh, I talk about cleaning lye containers in my lye safety video. So you could go watch that if you're curious. Okay, so let me go mix up the soap frosting and we'll start piping the top. <laughs> okay, you guys, look at this pink. Is this not like the perfect shade of bubblegum pink? Tickled pink from Mad Micah's with a little bit of titanium dioxide. That is what it is. You need it in your life. Also, pigments from mica and colorant suppliers can be used in a multitude of things, including slime and resin. And I just want you to know that. <laughs> 
there was literally no follow-up. I was just like, just so you know, these suppliers supply a lot of different people. I hope you guys are really enjoying this uh, slumber party series. It has been so much fun to do this collection and even more fun to design. And you guys know I literally use crayons <laughs> to make my designs on a piece of paper. But for this year, one of my resolutions was to make more intricate designs and to use more colors to make them kind of artworky looking. I don't know what inspired me to do that exactly. Oh, come on. There's got to be one more in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I decided to get an iPad and one of the pencils so that I can start to design my soaps um, digitally. I have access to more colors and I thought, wouldn't it be cool for me to be able to actually have these designs printed in collections and then maybe hang them in certain parts of our studio or maybe in my office or something. Uh, I would use uh, the term art loosely. I would hate to put myself in the same category as some super talented people out there, but it might be cool to have some of the original concept art up on the wall. So I thought that there were just multiple reasons and I'm very excited about learning how to do that. All right, now let's start putting some of these uh, embeds on. We're going to put three on each one and I am gonna put them on this way so that I can actually get things even. <laughs> I've started <laughs> leaning a little bit. I don't know why. So I'm just going to put these on here, try to make them a little more level. And I have four different colors of these, uh, put this guy over here. No, how dare. Anyways, I've got four different colors. They're all in the colors of Sweet Tarts Candy. That's kind of what I was going for, for the color palette for these. I thought about doing the traditional bubble gum bubble colors, but I don't know. I just, I get bored I and mean, I've already done that before. So I was like, let's change it up. Let's do something new. I started to plan out all of my interior design ideas for the inside of the soap studio, which I believe I'm going to call Holiday House because I want people to stay in here for like a holiday. It's a double thing over here. It's going to be a guest house and also a soap studio. I also think Holiday House would look really nice written. I wrote out a lot of different things and I just, I liked the way that that flowed. Our home and um, the property that we lived on. See, because I'm very, this is just how I am. I'm very old fashioned. I like to give names to your homes. I don't know. It just, it feels very personal and stuff to me. So um, the name of our house and our land is Fernwood. That's what I ended up naming it. There's a lot of ferns in areas that are kind of hidden in some of the back wooded parts. And then, yeah, wood because we're up against the woods and also so that looks very pretty written. So that's why I picked Fernwood for the name of our home. Obviously, my house isn't old enough for me to have something like an abbey on it. <laughs> so I was only, I could only go so far with the whole like Downton Abbey thing. Also, of course, I really love um, Anne of Green Gables as well. Lots of the books that I really enjoy have their homes named. And there's just something so nice about that. Ingleside and Anne's House of Dreams and Orchard House from Little Women. There's just something so splendidly magical about it. So I knew that was something I was going to have to do eventually. So yeah, I've been working on that. Of course, my kids are growing like weeds. I had someone ask me uh, underneath Lily's video why Will does not get featured very often. Will is still quite young. He's 18 months and he is not like Lily. Uh, he, he has not quite taken a shine to the camera. All of the times that Lily's in front of the camera, it's because she begs. She begs. And then we end up making a video. So Will's not like that. He doesn't enjoy it as much. That's typically why he's not in videos because uh, he's not out here and he doesn't enjoy it. <laughs> So yeah, kids are doing great. Caleb's doing great. Um, like I said in one of the videos, um, <laughs> he's taken up some new musical interests. <laughs> <laughs> we 
which I find quite amusing given his uh, taste that he's had for absolutely years. Um, it, it just doesn't fit and it's delightful. Pollyanna is doing quite well. I've seen a lot of comments recently asking after her and she uh, is cancer free and has been for about a year and a half now, I believe. So she goes in um, for checkups just so that they can make sure that everything looks good, but she is cancer free, living her best life. Siblings are thriving, parents are thriving. It's a good life over here at Royalty Soaps. So yeah, getting this whole place renovated is kind of my uh, first quarter goal. I do have um, a couple new products that we hope to launch this year, which will be really, really fun. And then I have some social media type projects that I'm also working on behind the scenes. So it has been an absolute blast getting all of those things done. It takes a lot, a lot of really, really good organization to have this many balls in the air behind the scenes. I think sometimes people forget we really are like a family small business and we all have a lot of different jobs. So I'm not just making like YouTube videos. That's not my only job. I typically do most of the graphic design or whatever you want to call it um, for royalty soaps. I'm the one that does the website. Uh, Caleb edits all the videos. I really hate that I put two of these in a row. I don't think I can live with that. But wait, is there even another color choice I could really put there? I don't think so. Because then I'd have a green or a pur Wow, I really... That is just... That's... I'm gonna have to ignore that. It's fine. Fine. Okay. Does everybody have one? I am notorious for getting one bar missed. Okay, I think everyone's got one. Now we move on to glitter. <laughs> So I have a custom mix of glitter here. I have some eco-friendly hollow sparkles and then a 50-50 blend of Simply Stardust and Cotton Candy Carnival. Could that be even more, like any more perfect for this soap? I don't think so. So a 50-50 blend of these with some hollow. It's fantastic. So first I'm going to start by just sprinkling it um, with my gloved hands here. That way I can make sure every bar has some and then I'll probably go in uh, and just kind of dump it on a little bit later. Actually, I wonder if this would be better to pick up with a makeup brush. Very probably. Oh yes, much better. Should have done that from the beginning. Note to self! No matter how tempting it is to put your fingers in there, always pick up the glitter with a makeup brush. <laughs> I will uh, tell you guys something. It's a secret, but it's about to be a secret with me and, you know, a hundred thousand other people. <laughs> We had to start weighing our glitters for our soap recipes at Royalty Soaps because I used so much glitter <laughs> that my brother Simeon never knew how much to buy. And I would go in there and, and be like, hey, there's not enough glitter on this bar. We ought to add more glitter. And he's like, if I add more, I won't have enough and I've got to order more. You've got to start weighing. You to start weighing your glitter so I know how much to buy. And so literally all of our glitters now have to be weighed out because I use so much of it. Who was it that said, give me sparkles or give me death? I don't know. I read it on the internet somewhere one time, so it must be true. It might have been Madame Sapiniffy that said that. I can't remember. She's also been begging to come back and see you guys. Apparently she's been working on a really, really special recipe. I've liked chatting with y'all today. It feels good. I've missed y'all a whole bunch. I love going down into the comments and seeing what you guys have been up to because a lot of you guys are so nice and are like, let me tell you what I did over Christmas break. So I really love getting to read all that and thanks for chatting with me. And yes, this looks perfect. Do I have a single complaint? No, I do not. I would not change a thing. I'm thrilled to death. And now I shall bring you guys in for a close up. So pink, so edible. Yes, sweet tarts, hubba bubba bubble gum, or bubblicious bubble gum, or bubble tape bubblegum. I can see nerds. I can see, well, they're like runts maybe. There's a lot of different things. I'm, I'm just feeling the 
the 90s and early 2000s candy vibe. I'm so happy. Um, so we're going to let this sit for 18 to 24 hours. And for those of you guys who are new around here, um, that is the amount of time that it takes for soap to turn into soap. So right now it's still caustic um, raw oils and uh, lye water solution. But after 24 to 48 hours, it has gone through a chemical change and is it a completely new chemical that we call soap. So that's why we're going to wait. Then we can chop up those bars, take a peek at the inside, and um, it's going to be amazing after this quick commercial break. Okay, guys, looks flipping fantastic. Let me zoom you in a little so you can get an even better view. So I'm cutting this with my soap cutter, Natasha, from Goodspeed Soap Cutters. I purchased this one with my own money, but I will leave you guys a link to it down below. It is by far the least expensive multi-bar cutter that I have tested that still works absolutely incredible. So there's a shout out for those of y'all looking for a new multi-bar cutter. Even with shipping to the United States from Russia, it still beats a lot of the U.S. suppliers. So take that as you will and let us take a peek at the inside. So yes, this is what it looks like on the inside. We've got our three little gumballs. Everything is still nice and creamy. I do expect this to discolor slightly over time because that bubble luscious scent um, has a little bit of vanilla in it, so it will probably discolor to a very light tan. But I have already made this before, like I said, and I have tweaked the recipe to be a lot brighter. So it's definitely going to be a lot brighter than my first recipe that uh, sadly didn't get filmed. And let me tell you, it is unreal how good this smells. The glitter matches perfect. The green looks fantastic. I'm really obsessed. I'm going to pull off these little end pieces here. And for those of y'all wondering, we chop these in half and sell them as samples. I just love how creamy this looks. Ugh. It just smells so good right away. I also get a teeny tiny, I don't know why this is, my particular nose, and I'm sure Caleb would smell this and tell me I'm crazy, but I almost get a teeny tiny bit of root beer smell in there. I don't know why, and I also don't particularly like root beer, but this smells like a root beer kind of cream soda. And again, I'm not sure why I think this. It could be that that's not actually how it smells to 99% of people, but I have a weird little sniff Okay, so question of the day. I know I've missed questions of the day in a couple of these videos. I crave your indulgences. Question of the day. Which is better? Do you like the Hubba Bubba bubblegum or bubblicious bubblegum? I cannot remember off the top of my head, but as a kid, my favorite bubblegum was the one with the goose with the crown. <laughs> which one that is. All I remember is the branding and the marketing for that. So um, clearly they did a good job with their branding because that's all I can remember. I can't even remember the company name. I just remember that goose with the crown. <gasps> I guess there's also double bubble bubble gum. Also, we don't have to talk about the gum that's in blow pops because is that even gum? I don't think so. We don't associate with that. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, uh, please give it a big thumbs up and maybe comment down below. That really helps my channel and the algorithm. It's very funny because YouTube favors royalty soaps about once a year and it throws us into like the algorithm and tons of new people come in and it only happens once a year and I never know when that's gonna happen. So your comments actually make a huge difference and really, really help us out when it comes to being found. And again, if you want to get your hands on one of these 90s inspired cotton candy bubblegum bars, they'll be available on February 6th at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, royaltysoaps.com with the rest of the Slumber Party collection. We do only launch our collection and our website once a month. The website stays open all month and then it shuts down right at the very end for about 24 hours so that I personally can go through and organize all the listings and everything. However, our soap normally sells 
out within the first hour, though we are increasing production every single time. I'm gonna go ahead and say that again right here at the beginning of 2021. And if you wanna read a little bit more about cart holds and all of that kind of good stuff, you can go to my Instagram. I have a little saved tab about shopping and release day that will tell you all the information you need to know since things go a little bit differently over here at Royalty Soaps. So without further ado, <laughs> it's literally the outro. Without further ado, see all you people <laughs> later. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, like, I don't know, uh, eating some cotton candy or getting yourself a pack of bubble gum. I have found, for me personally, um, I have a very active, <laughs> very active brain, and uh, chewing gum all day really helps me concentrate. I don't know why. Also, is that scientific? I don't know, but it helps me personally. So if you have a brain that's constantly doing this all day, try chewing some gum. Maybe uh, adding your jaw into the mix will take some of the strain away from your brain. Again, very, very scientific. I definitely know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't really care what you do though. Just be sure you do something fun for yourself today. Again, I know we're in January. I know it's a new year and I know that last year was really hard for a lot of you guys. I'll probably continue to say that in a couple videos coming out just because I'm aware of that and I just want you to know that this is going to be a very fun and a very exciting place this year. I love talking about soap. I love this being all about soap so that you guys can just walk away from the issues that we're having and we can focus on a really cool craft that I do that you guys could potentially do. You can use the Royal Creative Academy if you want to learn how to make it. Um, I will have some updates for that coming out later in the year, which is going to be great. I'm very excited. Okay, I've talked way too much. And so, have an absolutely royal day, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Yeah.